Well, what is SSL? Um, so that's what I'm going to cover tonight. I'm not covering this from a technical perspective. Uh, from those of you that have your own hosting company and deal with certificates and everything, different topic. However, what I'm going to cover tonight is the basics of how it's working from a non-technical perspective. Uh, at least that's my goal. Um, so we'll, we'll start off by talking about mail. Because it makes sense when we're looking at web pages to think about mail, right? It actually does as far as, this, as this security goes. So if I send an email to somebody, I send information. It's like sending a postcard. So let's say that Brian is my mail server. But if he's the mail server and now is actually sending that mail over to Joseph, notice that Brian can read it as it goes by. Because it's in clear. It's like sending a postcard. Anything you send in the postcard, anybody can read in the middle. Now you think, okay, well, in the mail system, you have to be the postmaster to read what's in the middle. Well, it depends on how you do your mail, right? If you do your mail through mailboxes, etc., or through one of the places where, say, the CIA has plants, um, no, or, or you know, lots of other places. There are lots of opportunities for somebody to see that. There's also, we also know, that the post office is taking pictures of everything goes through. Not saying this from a conspiracy theory thing. They're taking pictures of it because they're using that to track whether or not mail is damaged and what if it is damaged, where is it damaged. They're taking pictures of the address information so they can scan that. So they're really scanning it, but it's taking a picture when they scan it. So they're taking a picture of scanning the information off of it so they can they can route things automatically. We, the mail doesn't, you know, it's the, it's the the Monty Python movie or whatever where they got 15 million squirrels going through moving stuff. Post office doesn't work that way. Uh, squirrels are not unionized. It doesn't work out very well. Um, and they also don't have that many people in the postal service. So a lot of the way that mail has scaled, whether that be U.S. postal system, foreign postal system, UPS, FedEx, whatever, they automatically scan stuff. Well, as I say, they're taking pictures of it. So if you content the information that you have is on the outside of the uh, of the envelope or whatever it is that you're sending, then there are lots of opportunities for somebody to grab that. Whether they can grab it because it went by them at 40 miles an hour and the, and the postal systems, or they've got access to the pictures within the system, as Target understands, everybody, lots of people can have access, access to what's going on inside your, your computer systems. Um, or whether that be somebody actually intentionally breaking in and trying to gather information. Uh, for instance, if you put it in your mailbox to, before it goes out, somebody can come by and look at your mail. Yes, it's a federal offense. doesn't keep one of my neighbors from doing it. Um, so... If you if you use a, po a, a, a postcard, it's through the clear text. Anybody can get a get a look at it. So what do we do for most of our mail, especially things that we care about? We don't want other people to read. We stick it inside an envelope. We seal the envelope. Hopefully a little bit better than what I just did. We seal the envelope. Now I can send this to the post person. Brian can see what's on on the outside of the envelope. If he's got really good scanners, he can also kind of see what's on the inside of the envelope because we have modern technology, but it's more secure, right? Now when he passes that on to destination, to, to Joseph or Jill or whoever, there we go. They, now Jill's reading my mail. <laughs> the envelope is protecting the, the data on the inside. Now, as I say, this is not a foolproof uh, um, um, model because especially with modern technology, we can scan through one piece of, of, of uh, material into another. If I really care, I can get secure envelopes that are, that are harder to scan through, and I can probably do things like add tinfoil to it or whatever else to make it even more difficult <laughs> to where the scanning mechanism will now you know, not be able to read what's really on the inside. Right? If I put enough, if I wear enough lead jacketing, their x-rays are not going to show my bones, where, you know, however you want to look at that. right? So, Email is the same type of thing. When you send email, there's lots of places for it to be viewed. So if I send email from me to somebody in Europe, we can be pretty certain it's going to be talking to more than a couple of different mail servers on the way on the way across. Um, it's going to be talking to the mail server from my ISP most likely, uh, and then whoever they send it to, whoever they send it to. Now, if everybody happens to be using, you know, on both sides, if you're both using G Gmail, if you're both using ho uh, Hotmail or something like that. Then all the internal things are internal to that one mail system. 
if you're if this is the employer's job or uh, mail. So if you're doing this for work email, and you send this to a coworker, you are talking directly to one of the the company's uh, web servers, which today is probably Gmail anyway. Um, but you're talking directly to a company's web server or mail server to send the mail, and they're talking directly to a company's uh, mail server to read the mail. Um, unless they're doing it, well, even if they're doing it on their phone, but then there's other things that are going in place on the phone where people can be observed. Um, but if you're staying within one system, you have less third parties getting in and looking at things. And I say less. I didn't say none. Part of the reason I say less is because you're still going across routers. So I'm talking to that mail server, but in order to get that mail server, I'm talking to different routers. I'm talking to my ISP's router. Probably two or three routers at my ISP. Uh, probably a couple routers after that to talk to whatever mail server as well. Um, uh, I know of quite a few people in the ISP world that have gotten jobs because they broke into an ISP's router <laughs> and said, hey, I'm here. And the ISP said, we'll hire you if you can fix that so that other people can't do it. Well, obviously, if people are getting jobs that way, which probably doesn't happen very much in the last decade, but this has happened in the past, people being able to get jobs that way, it must be happening with a decent amount. I mentioned the target break-in. Uh, and there's uh, quite a few other break-ins that we can mention. Yahoo's got hit. Although I will give Yahoo um, um, some credit on this. It was a company that they bought that got broken into, so it wasn't directly Yahoo. Unfortunately, the company they bought was storing passwords from other services, so like Gmail got hit because Yahoo got broken into. Um, so obviously, piece, things can get broken into. Um, I know of uh, a couple of different... Uh, uh, um, Shall we say larger level than my personal email type of scenarios, uh, where you, where government is involved, and governments have the resources to get to whatever they want. I'm not talking about Snowden, the U.S. government. I can be talking about other governments um, and uh, things that got altered uh, while they were in the mail system, physical items that got altered while they were in the mail system. So, if you if you look at somebody who has those types of resources. They can obviously get into ISPs, um, and uh, uh, even without looking at recent security release or information about security practices within the U.S. Uh, and certain er, certain uh, agencies within the U.S. Um, so there's lots of people who can look at it. So if you're sending something the clear text, there's lots of people that can have access to that. Uh, if you are doing this again, if this is a work message, or if this is going through your personal ISP, then whoever controls those servers has access to it. Whoever controls those routers has access to it. Much less the people who have broken into it, or potentially broken into it. Uh, I don't want to say every broke, every router on the, on the internet has a backdoor, probably just 90%. No. Um, it's a very small amount, but it's still a significant amount uh, if you're concerned. So if you send email in clear text, it can be read. There's a pretty decent chance that it's being, it can be read. It's definitely being scanned because routers are looking at content and some other things. If you're using Gmail, they're looking at, you know, they're looking at spam. They're looking at how can they advertise to the person you just sent the mail to and things like that. Um, what they're doing with that, I don't, never worked at Gmail or Google, so I don't know, but they are definitely looking at it. So what we, we can do is we can use encryption to put an electronic envelope over that email over that content, so that now when they look at it, they just see the encrypted data. They don't actually see the, the email that I wrote, because what I was talking, you know, what I was telling my wife about our cat is really, really important. I don't want people to know about it. So I can send encrypted email, um, and that was like the envelope, right? I'm sending, I encrypt it first, and then I send it out, and when it goes out into the world to do whatever it does out in the world on its way to Joseph, then it's encrypted, and anybody that's taking a picture of it, they're taking a picture of the encrypted version of it. Given resources, time, etc., my stipulation is everything can be decrypted, um, but the time to do so can be thousands of years at this point. So if you use decent encryption, uh, then it works fairly well, and you can be fairly certain it's secure. Um, and to some extent, one of the basics of, of, of encryption is if you use decent encryption, those that have the resources to go after that, if they were already after you, you've already lost, right? The point that the NSA cares who you are while you're in the U.S., you're done. So don't worry about it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, not, uh, I'm not qualified to tell you how to keep the NSA from, from reading your mail. Not even close. Um, however, we can make it easier to where you're not inadvertently giving information 
to somebody who might have broken into your ISP's router or your home router. Uh, as Europe is finding out where a lot of uh, the uh, home routers that are being sold in Europe have back doors in them and have been broken into by the millions. Um, so it can be your own router that is giving away your information. Um, and also, by the way, your printers don't need to be sending information back to anybody either. All right. Um, so that's how email works. I encrypt it locally and I send it off, but it's a blob. Now, on the routers, in the, on the internet, things get broken up into chunks to move from place to place. They don't, they don't just send one huge blob. But from the data perspective, we can count it, we can consider it to be just a blob. I've, I've encrypted it. I now said, hey, take this data, send it over there, and it gets sent over there. Some of the information is still in clear text. I want to cover that because in email, I still need the, the SMTP server, the mail server, still has to know, know who to send the mail to. So that information can't be encrypted because otherwise it couldn't find out who to sell, send things to. So there is some information, the envelope information, that is still unencrypted. In my example that I gave, Brian was still able to see that the mail was going to Joseph. So it was Jill as she stole the mail so she could make a copy of it and then deliver it to where it was going, possibly without Joseph noticing. I think he did, but <laughs> the potential exists that he didn't, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> so the envelope Im information with, with uh, uh, mail is still available. So n not everything is encrypted, but the content itself can be encrypted. Now, when you look at a web page... You might think, hey, I'm saying give me that information. Give me this web page, right? And so it's also just a chunk of data. Eh, it's not really the way the web works. Um, and it's not really the way the web work has, has worked for a long time. Back in the day, that's kind of the way the web, web worked. Uh, but nowadays, um, and a lot of it has to do with increasing uh, um, uh, service so that things are faster, uh, that they're, you know, we get quicker turnaround when we do request something. Um, so these are things that we've kind of needed in place in order to have a better web browsing experience. We could all pretend we were still on dial-up and have a really web, slow web experience by turning these features off, or we can continue looking at multiple web pages in a day. Um, the other, th so th that's uh, the other thing is for uh, web, you're really having a conversation. You're contacting the other server and saying, "Hey, I'd like to have this information." And most likely, that web page has graphics and other pieces to it. So as you get the information, you're like, oh, I need this, and I need that, and I need that. It's you know, kind of like going to a store. I need one of these, one of those, one of those. But the web page tells you. You say, give me this, and then it gives you the shopping list. And you might have to go to multiple web servers for that as well. Um, and of course, you might look at subsequent pages. So uh, what I am talking was talking about thus far was all in one page. Or if I go look at a second page on the site, then I'm going there again. So again, we have that conversation so that connection stays open, so that when I go look at that second page, I'm getting a faster connection, because I'm already talking to the web server. So the, the, the just encrypt the data portion of it doesn't really model for th this high level type of, of model. So what we need to do is think about the, uh, the conversation with the web server as being a path that we're following, a road that you're on, or something like that. Um, so what I'm doing is I'm sending data back and forth. And I was supposed to keep one of my envelopes for this portion of the, the evening, but I, I will move on to, to something else. So we will use... That's right, we'll, we'll, use, we'll use one of the ropes. So I've got this rope that I haven't finished untangling. And now uh, Jill is the web server that I want to talk to. <laughs> yeah. So, so I send a request out. And go, it's the router. The packet arrived on order. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> it's it's a UDP web server. <laughs> so now I have this this conversation with her that is, we can represent by a road, a line, in this case, a piece of rope. But as you, as you can see, you can see the rope. Right? It's, it's unencrypted. So again, anybody in the middle can be looking at the conversation. So if you pull up a, a non-SSL protected uh, website, you're doing the same thing as, as the original example with the mail. You're sending information back and forth unencrypted. 
the routers in between can see all the data that's going on. Here, give me a password. <laughs> yes, so if I give if I give her a password to, to authentic, if I give her authentication credentials, then anybody else that's in the way can have a copy of those authentication credentials, and now they can log in as me. Or they can sell that to somebody, and, and then that person can log in as me. Uh, if that also includes even worse than my uh, uh, authentication credentials, perhaps, for instance, all of my credit card information in order to make a purchase, well, now anybody in the middle can sniff that, and hey, they have all the information they need in order to use my credit card. There are a few other things that take in place, because if they're just buying stuff and sending it to my home address, I might be getting things I didn't want. Hey, I didn't buy this elephant that I remember, um, so which could cause me problems, but you know, it's not as bad as they're buying and sending themselves envelope, uh, elephants. Um, but we also know that that's quite possible. That's one of the problems with the target break-in is because 48 million people can now be buying elephants for people in China and Russia and wherever else people are buying elephants from. So we don't want to send this certain types of data anyway. Depending on who you are, that might be all data. But you don't want to be sending certain types of data unencrypted. So what we do for that is we use SSL. And SSL basically builds a tunnel. So now I can put the information inside of a tunnel instead of going through and sending it in clear text. Now if that tunnel is encrypted, <laughs> then yeah, then all of the content that they're looking at is also encrypted. Right? And that's what HTTPS is. It's saying HTTP over SSL. SSL being the encryption technology that we're using. So it, you connect to the web server. You set up a secure tunnel using SSL, and there's steps that go on behind the scenes to make this happen and make it happen mostly fairly well. Um, and then you have secure connection between the two machines. And if you're sending data back and forth, they're encrypting everything that goes through. And again, all the routers, everybody that's touching the data as it goes by, can make a copy of every packet. That's not changing. They can still make a copy of everything. But they're not making copy of the encrypted version of the packet as opposed to the clear text version of the packet. And that makes it much more difficult for them to go through and figure out what the data is. If you're using bad encryption, they can decrypt it fairly quickly. Um, and again, for the, the Snowden type of stuff, uh, some of the releases he's had is that they can decrypt uh, certain types of encryption on the fly. So if you're using SSL and you're using those types of tech, uh, those types of encryption, it, they can read it as it goes, right? Um, but if you're using good encryption, which most things should be using nowadays, um, then you can be fairly certain you're okay. There are other places that they can break in more easily than just breaking raw breaking the encryption. Um, now, web browsers aren't necessarily configured to only use the stronger encryption, but uh, for the most part, you want to get be encrypted. And as I said. To some extent, just encrypting it all will take care of a lot of the the five and dime type of people trying to break in. Makes it more difficult. You know, you don't want to be you don't want your car to be unstealable. You want it to be less stealable than the guy you're parked next to, right? So if if you can encrypt your data, your connections, that'll also that already help you because you you'll be less likely target. Um, and, it, and again, if you're if you're talking about somebody with deep multi-decade pockets, uh, government agencies and so forth, you're already kind of in trouble if you become a target for them anyway. Uh, if you're doing that on your own, um, but for basic web surfing, um, this is as I say, this is what SSL is doing. We're encrypting the data so that yes, they can make a permanent copy of the encrypted version of it, but all they've got is the outside of the envelope. And the idea is that the encryption makes it to where it's difficult for them to get it. Um, so uh, I gave the car example, but what um, you know, banks have vaults. We all know about them, and, they, and we see them in, in bank heist movies, and we also see them in, in different things. But what is the goal of the, of the bank vault from early on? Is it to make it to where they can't be broken into? No, the goal is to make it to where it costs more to break into the vault than the value of whatever you would have been getting out of the vault. So if they're if they're storing a thousand dollars in there, they just need to make sure it costs you a couple grand to break in. If they're st storing hundreds of billions of dollars in there, they want to make sure it costs you billions of dollars in order to break in. Or if you break in, you can't take out the hundreds of millions. You can only get a couple thousand, and therefore again you're you're getting there. So the goal is to make it 
more expensive to break in than it is the value of whatever you would be getting out of breaking into the place. So that's what a lot of security is. Um, and so this is what the SSL is doing is providing for us. Um, if you care about security, um, as I said, there are things you can do to make it make your systems more secure. Uh, we can turn off certain encryption protocols within the web browser and tell web servers that, hey, if you're using this and this is the best you have, go away. I'm, I'm just not going to shop with you. Um, there's also things you can do, like for, I mentioned Gmail a couple times. Uh, I think Hotmail has this as well. Um, but a lot of other services have both encrypted and non-encrypted versions of the website available. Um, so you can say, I always want the encrypted version of the website. Um, and so you can choose to have the encrypted version rather than the unencrypted version. Uh, if a site doesn't have an encrypted version and you need your communication with them to be secure, go somewhere else. So, and that's that's one of the ways we can make sure everybody gets gets upgraded. If you if the people who aren't doing a good job don't get serve, you know, aren't getting customers, that will help encourage them to upgrade. All right? 